You know how Google Translator can help you communicate with somebody who doesn't speak your language and avoid miscommunication? That's essentially color management. It establishes a mutual language between your camera and your display. So I'm gonna explain this as like a hierarchy or a funnel, if you will. So let's start with three main variables to color management. Number one is your camera color space, your working color space, and your display color space. And once you have the information, you move into the second step of the process. Are you gonna work in scene referred color space or are you gonna work in display referred color space? And the next step is to pick a color management workflow. And the most common one is ASUS, Academy Color Encoding System. And the second option inside Resolve would be RCM or Resolve Color Management. And then the final step, the one that we're going to use is node-based color management or NBCM. I came up with it, but let's hope it sticks. And the reason why I picked NBCM is because it's the same as shooting in manual settings. You wanna be in charge of your ISO uh, aperture and your shutter speed. It's the same exact thing in post. And most importantly, on my channel, I wanna give you the process, the method, instead of like, confusing the heck out of you and showing you 20 different things. I put in the 10,000 hours to develop this skill so I can simplify your life. Speaking of simplifying your life, I've put together a dedicated course that will literally save you years of like stumbling from video to video, advice to advice, and learning without focus. Plus we're doing a Black Friday sale and you can get 40% off if you sign up right now. And here's what you get when you sign up for the course. 300 plus on-demand lessons, weekly coaching videos, exclusive access to the Facebook community, discounts on some of your favorite plugins, job opportunities, and you get to go from zero to becoming a rock star colorist in just under 12 weeks. Our students have worked with brands like Nike, McDonald's, Samsung, Pepsi, Gucci, Porsche, Google, Nikon, Pampers, and the list goes on. And there are hundreds of stories like this. So now it's your time to put your name on that list. Click the link to sign up. I will see you in the masterclass. All right, so let's go back to our diagram and get a better understanding for it. So the first thing that you need to know is the log profile that you shot your footage in. Let's just say right now I'm shooting on A6700 and S-Log3, and then I'm grading in Resolve and my display is Rec. 709. So S-Log3 gives us about 15 stops of dynamic range claimed by Sony. SDR, we know, chokes at about six stops of dynamic range. So your timeline could be set in scene referred, which would be S-Log3, or your color space could be set up as your display referred, which will be SDR. Now, keeping the dynamic range in mind, would you rather be working with 15 stops of dynamic range while you're color grading or six? So the answer is obvious. You wanna work with the highest amount of dynamic range, or you can choose a standard working spaces, which are ASUS CCT and your DaVinci wide gamut. Now these give you more than 20 stops of dynamic range. So no matter which camera you throw at it, you know for a fact that you will be covered. And in this example, let's just say if we use DaVinci wide gamut. Now we're at 20 plus stops of dynamic range. Our camera captures up to 15 stops and our output is only six stops. We wanna have the most amount of control. Why? Because if tomorrow our director or producers ask us for an HDR trim, which is about 10 stops of dynamic range, we can easily just flip a switch and export a 10 stops of dynamic range image since we were working off of 20 stops of dynamic range. But that wouldn't have been possible if we were working in display referred, which would have been six stops of dynamic range. So hopefully that clarifies why scene referred color space is way superior and that's the color space you should work in. But this is where majority of the beginners make the mistake because now we're gonna jump into resolve and I can show you how most of the people will set up their color space. All right, so now we're inside resolve and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my project settings and uh, under color management, what we see is our color science is set to DaVinci YRGB. That basically means that there is no color management applied. What does that mean? That means is that these settings don't mean anything. So I can just go click right here and choose anything from here. And you see the image in the back and keep your eyes on the scope as well. And I'm gonna hit save and you'll see nothing will change. You see that? 
So like it has no effect because there isn't any color management applied yet. We're gonna be doing that on a node level. And if you guys wanna follow along, you can download the practice footage. The link to that is going to be in the description below. So now let's go ahead and do it. So let's start with a beginner's version first. So I'm gonna grab my CST, which is color space transform. I'm gonna drop that on. Since this footage is shot in raw, it's pretty simple. If you didn't know beforehand, you can just go hover over here um, you can pop this guy open, metadata, and click on this guy right here. And I can go all the way down to tech details. And right there, it tells me my gamma notes. It's Canon log C or log three and uh, cinema gamut. So it gives me all the information, which is amazing. Well, that's not the case. If I go right here, now this footage is shot on my A6700 in log. But if I go to the same place, if I click right here and go to tech details, there's no information. So if you're shooting something uh, on H.264 format uh, or H.265, whatever have you, the information doesn't come through. Only if it's shot in raw, it's gonna carry over the metadata. So in that case, you will just need to ask your producer to provide you with a camera spec sheet. After I apply my color space transform, we already know what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and put in uh, that information. So for input color space, I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, Canon Cinema Gamut. And then for the input gamma, I'm gonna select Canon C log three or Canon log three. And as soon as I do that, it looks great. Like it looks really good, right? And then under my output color space, a beginner would do this. So they'll go ahead and they'll select Rec 709 and gamma 2.4 because that is their display referred color space, right? So as soon as they will do that, the image is gonna look like that. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? So we're gonna park right here. We're gonna create a new version, which is going to be a pro version. So now the only thing that I'm going to change here is I'm going to create another node and I'm gonna hold option and drag and drop. So it basically copies over your settings and don't freak out. We're gonna fix that in a second. So if I go back to my first node, the only things I'm going to change here uh, are the output color space and gamma settings. So I wanna work in DaVinci White Gamut because remember we said like that is a superior working color space. And then I'm gonna select for the output gamma DaVinci Intermediate. And this is what happens. And it's still not correct yet. So right here, what we need to do is we need to change that for input color space to DaVinci White Gamut. And for the input gamma, we have to select uh, DaVinci Intermediate because that's what's feeding through, right? Coming into here. And then, we're outputting it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So if I go back and forth, nothing really changes. Like if you look at my scopes, uh, everything is exactly the same, except something very interesting is happening if you're looking at my color warper. Look at, so this is the beginner's version. This is the pro version. What, is, what does this mean? This means that we're working with six stops of dynamic range because we're choking our image right here to Rec. 709 and the colors are already maxing out compared to when we come out here, we're in a much larger color space, a much bigger container, if you will. So we have so much more room for little nuances. What makes a creative look a creative look? Let's put it to practice. So let's go to the pro version and I'm just gonna, uh, create a nice S curve that has a pretty healthy shape. So we're gonna just go right here. I'm just looking at his face and I just wanna bring some separation from the background. So even something like that, it looks good. I like it, but let's just not go too crazy. So even this looks like really good and he pops out. That is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna just copy this, Command C. I'm gonna go to the other version and I'm going to do Command V and paste that, okay? So the curve is gonna look the same, but something is very different. Look at my waveform and let's expand our scopes. And now keep an eye in our vector scope and how it looks and also our waveform. And now let me go to the pro version. Look at my curves, okay? Nothing is changing, but everything is changing. So what is really happening? Like look at how much more detail is protected in our pro version compared to our beginner version. And look at like how the colors are bending compared to like how smooth everything is here. And uh, you can even see it right here in this node, 
how we have so much more room left to play with. Whereas in the beginner version, it's just choked. It's gone, right? Like we're maxing everything out. Just look at it. So let's go ahead and save this version so I can actually pop it open like right here and we can just make it bigger and now go back and forth and look at the difference. So I'm going to hide this. And now if we go back and forth, I mean, look at one just looks like something was shot on a camera from the 2000s compared to something that shot on an 8K camera that is capable of 15 stops of dynamic range. And this entire difference was created because one version is working with six stops of dynamic range. Even when you make the same exact settings, the image looks completely different. And the other one under the hood is working with 15 stops of dynamic range and is capable of even more and is giving you this image. And that's why, yes, it sucks to understand color management because it could be daunting, but once you understand just the basics, your grades are going to look exponentially better. So there you have it. And guys, do not forget to sign up for the masterclass. I have a link in the description. I want you to just check it out, go through the curriculum, just look at everything that is covered. And if you enjoyed what you saw here, think of that plus 30 plus hours of content, not to mention we do weekly competition where you get tailor-made feedback. So the value is just out of control. Take advantage of the sale. Link is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.